Charlie, in focusing on consciousness, philosophers take different positions. Some say it's an illusion. Some say it's so fundamental that it's one of the most fundamental things in the universe, irreducible. As a psychologist who focuses on data, some unusual data to be sure, how do you view this question about the irreducible nature of consciousness or the fundamental nature? I view it through the lens of asking how useful is the question. What will different kinds of answers to the question lead you to do, and what might you learn from that? If, for instance, you think that consciousness is an illusion, it's going to influence the kind of research you do and the kind of life you lead that's going to overlook a lot of aspects of consciousness. If, on the other hand, you view it as fundamental, which is my pr preference, even though I don't have any absolute knowledge about it, then you're going to ask questions about consciousness and do research on it that you wouldn't do otherwise. So it just in general, as a psychologist, I say it's very important how you put a question together because it's going to contain assumptions that control what you do and what you might learn. I think it's more fun to make consciousness fundamental. Okay, it, it, it at least enlarges our research agenda. It allows us to explore right. more things. If you make it an illusion, then basically you can say, I can sit back and wait for the neurophysiologist to answer all my questions. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, my consciousness is, would like to know a lot of things and know what to do. Fine, but that, again, doesn't make it right. It makes it, or, or makes it desirable, but what we want doesn't necessarily make what is true. But we won't know whether that's right or not until we keep going and researching things. Fair. And so, if we don't research them, then we'll never know. Okay, so let's make the assumption that consciousness is fundamental or irreducible. What, what, what follows from that? What are the kinds of research that we can do? And what, what can we learn that will help us to answer that question? If you make consciousness fundamental, for instance, and say that part of its being fundamental is a certain unity of consciousness, then it becomes very interesting to ask questions like, why don't we experience telepathic contact with each other all the time? Why do we feel separate? Uh, is it simply because consciousness is so focused on a particular physical body and brain that it's ignoring all the other telepathic impressions? Uh, that's an interesting one and possibly researchable. We have a little data, for instance, to show that people can respond to a telepathic or clairvoyant stimulus without knowing it. Their body or brain may show a reaction to it, but consciously they have no idea that they've actually responded to it. Well, I think this is a, an important question. If consciousness is indeed fundamental and there's something very special about it, you know, what, what is that stuff and why doesn't it all blend together so we're all sort of tied together in this uh, cosmic soup, which we're not. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's exactly the kind of question we have to ask. And, and, and can we make progress on that? Because if we can't, then maybe we should question our assumption that consciousness is not fundamental and it, and it is reducible to brain function alone. We certainly won't make progress on understanding consciousness if a priori we dismiss it as an artifact or an epiphenomena of brain functioning. Now that simply means we won't look at too many aspects of it. We'll, we'll stay to what's comfortable, to what fits into our instrumentation and our methods. Now, there's nothing wrong with specializing as long as you know you're specializing, right? If electrophysiology is my thing, and that's great, do it as well as I can. But to then think that this is the only valid approach to everything, that's sort of silly. Let's go forward. If consciousness is fundamental and somehow we can show that, uh, do we really know that it is fundamental or we would then know that it's something other than the brain because it, it can be something other than the brain and still not be fundamental because it could be derived from something else. It, then, then let's find out what that is. <laughs> is that possible in principle? Because maybe if we're dealing in the physical world of physical experiments and data, that, that in principle those kinds of things, if they exist, are not susceptible to the kinds of observations that we make in the physical world. When you ask an ultimate question like that, Robert, I'm reminded of uh, something that John Lilly once put very nicely. I can't quote this exactly, but it's something like, in the realm of the mind, what one believes to be true tends to become true. So the moral of all that is be careful what you believe.
If you believe in certain kind of limits, your mind may create those limits for you. If you don't, it may not. Try it both ways and see what happens. Well, I, I, I would put that almost in reverse, that because I have a desire for consciousness to be fundamental, and I have a desire that there be something other than the physical, that my self-consciousness has some independent existence, because I want that to be the case, I'm going to spend more time and think about it and talk about it, and maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm just fooling myself. Maybe, but what's the alternative? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the alternative is to, is to face reality and to look at the scientific data, and if the scientific data doesn't support it, uh, to, to be productive and put your, put your efforts into things that make sense and not into nonsense. This reminds me somehow about the debate as to whether we have free will or not. And if you decide you don't have free will, what do you do next and does it matter? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an experimentalist, I'm a pragmatist. I say try different approaches and see what comes of them and see where it takes you. If you go down some dead ends, that's fine. You learn from the dead ends. If you go to interesting new places, wonderful. After, what, 40 years, 50 years in investigating consciousness, uh, altered states of consciousness, parapsychology, and what, how can you sum up? Not that your career is finished, by the way. You're doing lots oh, of interesting you. things. Thank you. Say, but look, looking back on this remarkable uh, um, uh, journey that you've taken in all of these areas, uh, uh, what what do you fundamentally feel about consciousness? I feel two contradictory things. One of them is, on the one hand, the possibilities for human consciousness are enormous. When I think of the things I've heard about, some of the experiences I've had, wow, the human mind is incredible. On the other hand, I've become more and more honest and self-knowledgeable, and I know how very, very limited I am in most of my life. And that seems to be the reality. And uh, it's an interesting trip. 